Hey everybody, how's it going? So today we're going to get started on yet another dead MacBook. First thing we're going to do here, same thing we do on every MacBook, we're going to remove the coronavirus from it. No corona in my store. The beer virus free facility. No beer virus here, no beer virus there, no beer virus anywhere. I'm really loving this. See this? This is my overhead camera and it works now. Look at that. No shaking. Smack the desk. Punch the desk, punch the desk, punch the desk. I don't know why I didn't get this thing a long time ago. You got this and this. So I have two sandbags plus the tripod or a C stand, whatever the hell. Awesome. Let's see what this MacBook is doing. I'm going to turn on my uh, multimeter and power supply software. So it's taking 600 milliamps, but I don't have a green light, which is weird. Hmm, okay, now I get a green light. So there's a delay in the green light coming on. That's also weird. Let's see what I get on the screen. All right, turns on. Now, it has an SSD in it, so I would imagine that I would get some sort of Apple logo or something, but I don't. Hmm. All right, let's see. Do we have five volts going to the screen? We do. Do we have backlight? We do. So why don't we have a picture? That's weird. What? While you weren't looking, when you started, when you looked away and started typing, you had Apple logo bloating bar and then it faded away. Son of a bitch. How did you see that? All right, so the first problem we have here, let's see if any of you can, oh, look at that. I love it. Look at the zoom. I can actually use all of my zoom now. You without see that? It, without it bouncing everywhere. You see that? Look at that. Okay, so the trackpad and keyboard, they mentioned the trackpad wasn't working right. Obviously, I'm wondering if that's also going to affect the backlight. So let's see if I unplug that stuff if the backlight now works. I'm really loving having a good overhead camera. This is a really nice setup. It's a Sony A5100 and a Cell 18-135 lens. It really makes a nice combination. Okay, I'm going to unplug the stuff that's corroded. Let's see if we get any sort of difference here. Don't need the speaker. Don't need the keyboard backlight. Don't need this speaker, don't need the right I.O. board, and I don't need a webcam. The port does not look corroded, at least not too terribly corroded by MacBook standard. There we go. Now the light's coming on quicker. Okay, now we get a backlight. So this machine's issue appears to be primarily a bad trackpad. I'm going to read what the customer had to say about it. The computer was working, the battery won't even die, it wouldn't power up because the trackpad was corroded. That would get the power button down. The screen would come on and off. Trackpad corroded. Trackpad and mouse showed. Uh, trackpad and keyboard were just missing. Uh, again, that's going to be the trackpad. This is pretty much trackpad. I never knew that the trackpad could affect the screen showing up. That, that I learned something. Actually, wait a second. Let's see. I it possibly can, because the tra let's see if the trackpad has SMC lid going to it. So this is an 820-4924 board. I'm going to take a look at it in the schematic in the board view. So what they describe is trackpad keyboard not working, which obviously is trackpad on this, and also the screen not working. So let's go over how, the, how this MacBook works. So you have the keyboard connector over here, right? You have all these keyboard connections, WS keyboard 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now on the older MacBook, what would happen is it would go to a USB chip on the board. It would take that keyboard information and turn it into a single USB signal and send it to a USB MUX or the CPU. On this one, because Apple, it does something very interesting. 
it's going to take all this information and send it to a little BGA chip on the board down here, right? U4830. U4830 is then going to take the information it got from the keyboard, and I shit you not, it's going to send it out to the trackpad on an SM bus line, and then the trackpad is then going to take that information and then send it back with the trackpad to the computer. So if you go to the trackpad, which is going to be J, uh, no, it's going to be J4802 over here, it's going to take that information and then it's going to turn it into trackpad positive negative and also an SPI line. So on these machines, the trackpad and the keyboard can work via either USB or SPI. In the operating system, it uses SPI. In e EFI mode, when you first turn on the computer and you hold down the option key and you can choose what drive to pick from, it uses USB. Why there are two different modes to transmit the trackpad and keyboard information that work differently in different times is beyond me. The reason I know that there's two different modes that work in different ways is because when I have machines where the SPI line to the CPU is actually dead, it will only allow me to have keyboard and trackpad in EFI mode, not in the operating system. And here's the part that actually blows my mind. Apple does not have a USB driver for their trackpad or their keyboard on the A1466 for the operating system. I shit you not, you could put Gentoo fucking Linux on an A1466 with a blown SPI line to the CPU, and the mouse and keyboard work just fine. And OS X, they don't have a driver for USB for their own fucking product. Anyway, it's hysterical. But if you check this out here, let's just make this TLDR. Keyboard signal comes into the computer, gets processed, goes back out to the trackpad, gets processed again, then goes back to the computer to go to the CPU. So rather than have the keyboard come in and go to the CPU, and then the trackpad come in and go to the CPU, you have the keyboard go to a chip on the board, then go out to the trackpad, and then go back in here. So that if the trackpad goes bad, you not only have a bad trackpad, you also have a bad fucking keyboard. And the best part of this entire system, the part that is just so beautiful, bittersweet, for people like me that make money off of fixing Apple products, this piece of shit cable over here dies for no reason. Now, this machine died because of water on the trackpad, because it's not liquid resistant, because why would Apple copy the design that IBM came up with over 10 years ago and how to liquid proof their stuff? This died because of water. But there are many times where this cable over here literally dies for no good reason, and your trackpad and keyboard will start working, and it happens to die on the 2015 model, but not on the 2013-14. It's very similar to the hard drive cable failures on the A1278. So any of those hard drive cables, the 821-0814, I think. Oh, the, I'm, not, I'm sure if I got the number exactly right. But this 820-00184 over here, this cable will die often for no reason. And when it does, the machine will have no keyboard and trackpad. Now, usually it would just have no trackpad rather than no keyboard and no trackpad. But the reason on this model that everything dies is because of this ridiculous routing that happens. So again, the keyboard goes to a chip on the motherboard. Then, from that chip, it goes out to the trackbed to then get reprocessed and go back to the computer. It's like you're literally going this way to go that way. It's, it's, I, I, don't, I don't understand it. It makes me sad. But what I'm looking for here to see if there's anything on the trackpad connector that would cause the screen to turn off. And let's see if that's the case. So, J4802 is going to be our trackpad connector over here. And that's going to be where the trackpad cable is going to go to the trackpad itself. Now, if we take a look at the list of signals over here, you'll see that one of those signals is SMC LID. SMC LID is going to be the signal by the hall sensor on the side, also known, if you're not into electronics, as the little magnet reading thingy that senses the magnet in your screen. So how does the computer know when you close it? When you do this, computer on, computer off. What they do is they have a little magnet on the side of the screen over here. And then they have a little magnet reading thingy over here, also known as a hall sensor, which is then going to detect when you close it. Now, the way this works on this machine is if you go over here to where the hall sensor is, J5250, hall effect pad, it's powered by 3.3 volts. Now, when SMC lid is 3.3, 3.3, 3 3.4 volts, it assumes the machine is open. When SMC lid is low, it assumes that the lid is closed. So what's most likely happening here on the trackpad is that when you close the machine, it assumes that the lid is closed and turn off the backlight. But since the trackpad has SMC lid on it, if the trackpad is shorting SMC lid to ground due to corrosion, the machine is going to think it's closed. 
Now, why is it that the trackpad would have any say over this? Why would you have that signal go to the trackpad when you already have it going to a hall sensor? Why would you add this additional point of failure for the screen when there is no reason for it whatsoever? Yeah. Ask Tim Cook. I have no fucking idea. I just make money off of it. I'm not the one who designs this crap. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.